Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 43 of the platform specific series of my Z80 programming tutorials. We've looked at a lot of systems in the past in these tutorials. We're going to kind of be adding a new one today. We're going to be looking at the Spectrum Next. Now, the Spectrum Next is in Enhanced Spectrum. I've actually already done one introduction video on the Spectrum Next in which we looked at the 256 color mode and how to get simple bitmaps onto the screen. But I, there was a lot of interest in that video, so I'm going to be now adding it to the proper tutorial series and we're going to be looking through some of the hardware capabilities and discussing how to use them. Today we're going to be looking at something known as ULA Next. Now the 256 color mode was quite interesting but I wanted to sort of go back to the more traditional spectrum screen and look at the enhancement options on that and ULA Next is one that's quite interesting. So what is it? Well basically our standard spectrum screen is a black and white screen effectively one bit per pixel with some uh, color attributes laid on top and the color attributes are there's three bits defining the background, three bits defining the foreground, one bit defining the bright or not bright status of the other bits, and a flashing bit. So this is what we would traditionally have as options, and I used these to make this Chibi Acma screen, which looked okay, but I mean, obviously there's much better graphic designers than me for the Spectrum, but anyway, that's what we've got to work with today. Now, what ULA Next does is it allows us to reconfigure the bits so that rather than three being background, three being foreground, one being bright and one being flashing, we can have those bits allocated to the background and the foreground as we wish, and then we can map those to new Spectrum Next palettes that are capable of up to 512 different shades in various colors. And so that gives us a lot more flexibility, both in the color variation, so we can have much smoother colors, but also the number of colors on screen, because now, rather than having things like flashing bits, which are completely useless in most cases, we can have much more flexibility. So we're going to look at some options. What I've done is I've taken this Chibi Acma screen here and I've enhanced it and we're going to look at various different options here. So, well, what are our options? Well, the first option I've tried is taking this conventional spectrum screen, I've enabled the ULA Next option and I've used alternate colors for the different colors making up the screen. Now, the way that ULA Next works is you define a number of the bits from the right hand side, the least significant bit zero, that are going to be the foreground, and then the rest are defined as the background color. Now, I defined three bits as foreground colors, so that gave me up to eight colors, so I lost the dark option, so they're, they're all effectively maximum brightness. This then gave all the rest of the bits as the background, but because I don't use the flashing bit anywhere, that effectively made the background a four per color definition. So there were eight foreground colors and 16 background colors. And then I mapped those with some ULA next colors so that we could have a bit nicer shade. So you can see rather than the bright yellow here, it's now a slight orange effect here. And there's a slight purpling to the background here. So it's a few tweaks to colors. But if you look at Chibiko's hair, Chibiko's hair was a combination of dark and bright magenta here. Now it's all bright magenta because we've lost that bright bit being part of the definition of the foreground colors. Now, these two are effectively the same bitmap data for the screen. So if we were writing a game that was going to work on both the Spectrum and the Spectrum Next, we would be using the same file. This final option here uses the same black and white data, but it uses an alternate set of color attributes. So that's an extra 768 bytes that would just be used on the Spectrum Next. And what this has done is I've now mapped it so that the least significant four bits are the foreground color and the remaining four bits are the background color. And this gives us an option of 16 different colors for the background and the foreground. And again, we can completely remap them. So now you can see we've got multiple shades of gray here. We've got different shades of red here in the title here. We've got much smoother colors all around. We've got this lighter pink here and we've got some dark pink here where as you can see here it was only lighter pink before. We've got multiple shades of red on this weird creature here and we've got lots of different shades in our rocks here and we've got bright and, bright and dark colours all over the place. And so this has allowed us to have all of these colours on screen at the same time and we can completely reconfigure all these colours but the screen will not work on a classic spectrum because the colour attributes are completely different. So that's a brief description of the code, what we're going to be doing as a result. Let's see the code running and then we'll go over how it actually works. So here's the program loading. So there's the spectrum screen. There's the enhanced spectrum screen. 
that's the new color attributes and then here's the full ULA next with one nibble per foreground and background color which is the best we can do with these settings so you saw that it was probably a little bit fast but we're going to go over it and we'll see some screenshots of those stages but I just wanted to quickly show you the code actually running as always you can download the source code for today's lesson and have a go with it yourself and the compiled files now when it came to recoloring this screen I always use my Acrosprite editor. Now you can see here's the black and white bitmap data for the spectrum here. If we go to the settings page here and select ULA plus, I, I believe I named that wrong, it should be ULA next, but uh, I will get that changed. So you can see we've now switched to a new mode here and I'll just turn off the guides so that we can more clearly see the screen. Now here is the 16 colors that are defined up here being used for foreground and background colors and we can use the ZX paint option if we want to color things in so if I select a foreground color of green here and a background color of this kind of pink here and then I start scribbling away you can see those combination of color attributes are being used and we can invert it here and then if we think that what we've done is an improvement which I'm pretty certain it is not we can go to ZX spectrum here spec next and we can do save ULA next screen which will save all of the information both the bitmap data and the color data as byte data that can be just copied straight to the screen or what we can do is we can save just the color information you see what I've done in today's example is I've done a, a save of the standard spectrum screen unaltered and then I've saved just the color information of this enhanced screen and that allows me to have a version of the code that in theory could work on a classic spectrum and a spectrum next with the enhanced palette with just an extra 768 bytes of that alternate colors we've also got two options for saving the palette because we're going to use two different options one that uses one byte per palette definition and one that uses two bytes for nine bits per palette definition so we've got the two options here as well and we're going to see the result of that in action as well now, if you're not familiar with the Spectrum Next, the Spectrum Next uses a set of up to 256 Next registers that are exclusive to the Spectrum Next. And they actually have some special bytecode, some special Z80 enhancement commands that are used to set those. And we're gonna be looking at those later in this tutorial as well. So we're gonna see all of that just in a moment. But anyway, if they, all you need to know at this stage is that um, we've got these registers and they're gonna be very much involved in setting these enhanced features. So these are the ones we're going to need today. Now, register hexadecimal 14 is the transparent color option. This defaults to magenta and it was making bits of the image disappear. So I've actually set it to a different color so that we, it won't get in our way. So I've just set that so it won't have any problem. Now we use register 40 to select a palette entry that we want to change. We're gonna to have to set foreground and background palettes. The foreground palette starts from entry zero. The background palette will start from entry 128. So we're gonna to need to use that quite a bit. Now, if we're using one byte per color entry, we would write the new palette definitions after we've selected the starting point to number 41 here in hexadecimal, and that will start setting colors. It auto increments, so we can just start writing our bytes away to set our palette. If we're using a nine bit palette, two bytes, we would use hexadecimal 44. We would then write two bytes in this format here. The B here is the least significant blue bit, so we would have to write all of those and we just write away and that will define the palettes in the similar way to 41 but as I say it gives a little bit more option now as well as that we've got the ULA enable option here at hexadecimal 43 we would need to write a one to this bit here to turn on these ULA next options when we've turned on ULA next options we have to set register 42 here now we can set a number of bits to one but they have to start from the right hand side and this defines how many bits are used for the foreground so if we set these three to one we would end up with effect like, an effect like this where the foreground is a color from zero to seven and the background is a color from zero to 15 although as saying that the 15 would be the zero to 15 would be added to 128 because the backgrounds always start at 128 so effectively we select some bits for the foreground and any other bits would be part of the background now in my example the top bit technically is for the background but that was traditionally the flashing bit so we won't see that in play today now when the system boots the default is that the right hand side four bits are for the foreground which is effectively what we've got just here so 16 color foreground 16 color background 
but not compatible with a spectrum screen and we get that horrible mess we saw just a moment ago. So there's our options and that's what we're going to be doing. So how do we set these registers? Well, we do have a couple of options. We can do a combination of out commands, but the best option is to use the special commands that the Z80 within the Spectrum Next has been enhanced to support. The bytecode for these is hexadecimal ED, hexadecimal 91, then a single byte for the register we want to change and a single byte for the value. If we're going to set the accumulator as the source for the register value, we do ED92. So what I've done is I've defined some macros, next reg, next reg and next reg A, and these compile to the bytecode. So even though I'm using VASM, which doesn't know what a spectrum next is, I can co compile and I can use these new commands just fine, and you can see them just here. So that's what we're doing. So we saw that code just a moment ago. Let's go through what it actually does. So we're loading in a piece of data from an entry called sample screen. Now sample screen is down here. This is the bitmap data of a classic spectrum screen. It's actually the Chibi Akamas one from the game itself. And so this is our test data here. We've got something else called ULA next color map, which is 768 bytes of color map data for when we've got that one nibble for foreground, one nibble for background option enabled. Uh, you can see some palettes here. We'll look at those in just a moment. So first, we're copying the sample screen to hexadecimal 4000 for the entire length of the sample screen. And hexadecimal 4000 is the default visible screen. So we're just showing the screen. And then we're writing a zero to FE, which sets the borders to black. And then we're pausing for a little while. And that's what we saw before the default spectrum screen first. Now what we're doing is we're turning on the ULA for compatibility with the classic spectrum screen. So we're setting a transparent color that we're not going to use effectively. It's just a slight off purple, I think. So basically, we just need something that's not going to cause any trouble, really. So that's what we're doing just there. And then what we're doing is we're turning on the ULA next options. And we do that by writing bit 0 to 1 to register 43 here. That turns it on the ULA next. And then we want to configure it. So by default, I've set here that the three bits on the right hand side are one. Now we could do three bits here, we could do four bits here, five bits here. The three bits is really the only option that you can use if you want to have a spectrum screen work on the next. But what you can't do is you can't do something like that. The, the, the one bits have to be on the right hand side and they all have to be consecutive for it to work. And as I said before, any bits that are not marked as one here will end up being the background. So effectively, these five bits here. Now, I hope you're familiar with the spectrum, but if you're not, then by default, the bytes in the color area from 5,800 onwards are in this format. So the three bits on the right-hand side are the foreground. The, th the next three bits are the background, so zero to seven in each case. You've got one bright bit, which increases the brightness of both the foreground and the background. And the final bit is the flashing bit. And that's why even though I've got five bits defined here, I've only got colors zero to 15 because that flashing bit is never set in the sample file that we're viewing to the screen today. So we've now defined how the ULA Next is going to use our color information. The last thing we're doing is we're defining our palette. So we have to set color zero first, and we do that by writing a zero to next reg hexadecimal 40. And then we define this my palette foreground as the source, eight colors, and we use the define palettes command that defines the foreground colors. Now, the background colors always start at color 128. We've got 16 of them because remember, we've got these bits here, the three background bits and the brightness bit that are all in use in that original file. And so we have, we've got 16 colors and we use the background source and we use the define palette command again and then we pause. Now, here's the define palette command. It just reads in bytes from HL and writes them to 41. Now, if you remember, 41 was the eight bit per color entry palette definer here. And you can see the palettes here. So the three bits here are red, the three bits here are green, and then the two bits on the right hand side are blue. So these are our foreground colors. You see the first one's black, the last one's white. And here we've got a um, kind of purpley blue here, that's the sky. So these are effectively mimicking to some extent the classic spectrum colors. We've then got the background colors here. So the first eight are the dark colors. And then the next eight are the bright colors. So in most cases, they're the same because I didn't, didn't actually use dark colors very often. But in some cases, I made a very slight tweak just for a bit of fun. Um, so that's what we're going. So we've got 16 background colors and eight foreground colors. Ideally, I'd have preferred 16 foreground and eight background, but I don't think there's any way of doing that if without having a palette that doesn't work on a classic spectrum. If I'm wrong, someone please let me know. But anyway, that's the palette we're defining here. 
and that's our slightly improved version that we saw earlier. Let's just fire it up and you'll just see that. So we're loading up now and there's the classic spectrum. There's the slightly improved version. This is what we're going to do in just a moment. There and there, there's, there's the final version. So you, you saw up to this point there, the slightly improved version. And then what we did is we loaded in the new color map. This is 768 bytes of alternate color information, which is what I drew in just here. So this is the improved color definitions. And we write these to the color memory at hexadecimal 5800 onwards, the 768 bytes of it. We just copy it with an LDIR command. And then we had a pause just to see what an awful mess we'd made. And the point I was making there is if you run this on a conventional spectrum, it's going to be unusable. So you've, you've got to have some kind of way of detecting a regular spectrum and not doing it on that system. So there we go. And then we are now defining the alternate definition because before we were just using three bits for foreground. Now we're using four. So we've got a proper balance between foreground and background. And we're defining colors again zero from zero using register 40, same as before, to define the foreground from 128 using register hexadecimal 40 as before. We're using my palette plus in both cases now because the foreground color palette and the background color palette are identical because both have 16 entries. And in this case, I just use the same 16 colors, whereas before, because the background had 16 colors and the foreground had only eight, I couldn't do that. Now we're using a slightly different version here, define palettes nine bit. Here it is. And we're just again, reading in as many bytes as we've got, but we're writing them to hexadecimal 44, not hexadecimal 41 this time. And hexadecimal 44 is in this format here. So we're gonna to have to write byte pairs, but that's all down to the definition. And you can see the definition here. So effectively you've got three bits of red, three bits of green, two bits of blue, exactly as before, but now we've got one extra byte and only the bottom bit is used and that's the least significant bit of the blue definition here. And so that's what we're doing. We're just writing those palettes. And once we've done those palettes, we're finished. So we just halt the processor because we want to see the result. So there we go. So that's what I wanted to show you today. I found this quite interesting. I had some confusion at first with how the colors were working, but it seems pretty straightforward once you've got your head around it. So you can download the source code to today's example and also the binary files for the image you see here, the alternate palette, and also AccuSprite Editor, which is free and open source. And also this ULA plus file, this text file here, which is the data here. If you want to play around with my image here and do a better job than I did, which probably isn't very hard, then you can go ahead and do so. So I um, hope you'll do that. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. I'm going to be doing some more Spectrum tutorials on the, um, the Spectrum Next soon. So please stick around for that. And hopefully I'll be adding Sprite support for the Spectrum Next to my AccuSprite editor as well. Thanks for watching today and goodbye. If you enjoyed today's lesson, please check out my website. We've got tutorials, source code and development tools for 6502, 68000 and Z80 systems and a lot more systems coming in the future. We're going to be covering the 8086 and the ARM and a few other things as well going forwards. And if you've liked this lesson, if you've got questions, comments or suggestions on how it could be made better, please consider signing up to my forum. It's free, of course, and you can come along here and you can make suggestions, you can ask questions. And if you've got assembly projects you're working on, please let us know what they are. Maybe show off a few screenshots, tell us what things you've found interesting or what tricks you've come up with, because we'd love to know about it. Anyway, thanks for watching today and goodbye.